Hey, thanks for breakfast. I know what you want. All right. Hey guys, a bit of an adventure today. I am heading to Ohio to photograph a wedding tomorrow. Important stop for some breakfast and hitting the road. Uh, I'm in Asheville right now, about to head up the canyon and up 75. Uh, so yeah, beautiful day for a drive. Looking forward to it. Let's do this. Now my wedding is uh, taking place in a town called Xenia. It's uh, just outside of Dayton. Um, I think that's about an eight hour drive from my house. I've already done an hour of it. So we're talking about seven hours on the road starting now. Um, but I wanna tell a quick little story because it's kind of a follow up to my last video where I was ranting about Shutterstock using metadata to initially look at your images and how they kick things out based on the metadata. So I was going through some images recently that I sent into Shutterstock and I had this one image of this laptop keyboard that I thought, well, that's kind of graphic. And I thought it had a lot of sales potential. The ISO on it was 3200 and I knew Shutterstock is probably gonna kick this thing out based solely off the uh, ISO uh, because I'm pretty sure they're using the metadata to do the initial looking at those things. So I processed it in Lightroom, sent it out and I, I never really paid any attention to this, but one of the options in Lightroom is to include or not include the metadata. So I selected to only use, I think copyright or something. I, I took the metadata out. Um, well, lo and behold, Shutterstock accepted that image. And even better than that, I think the very next day it sold. Maybe I found a workaround for the, uh, the metadata thing. Now the other thing that's going to make this drive really cool is I'm going to be driving through the Smoky Mountains up into Kentucky on into Ohio in the middle of October when the leaves are changing. Spartanburg they're starting to change but they're still pretty green. Uh, I'm in South Asheville right now and they're starting to change here too but there's still a lot of green so I am hoping that just progressively it's going to get prettier and prettier as we go and so I'm Although I don't look forward to being in the car for seven hours, I'm still looking forward to this drive and uh, it's gonna be a photo weekend all across the board. So um, here we go and I will do my best to document it as we go. Um, making pretty good time. Traffic's been great. Weather's awesome. Trees are changing. Beautiful, beautiful weather. Um, whenever I go through Knoxville, I always think about Gage Talent, which is one of my favorite uh, modeling agencies. We use a lot of their uh, models uh, at my day job. Here happens to be a shoot from this week. Um, shooting with this little guy. He was from Gage Talent. They happen to uh, post this on their social media. So. Yeah, shout out to Gage Talent as I drive through Knoxville. on this highway. I'm just, I just don't think those people stay home. A 
Okay, so I made it to Covington, Kentucky, which is just across the Ohio River from Cincinnati. And I apologize that that shot coming into Cincinnati was not as cool as it normally is because of the traffic and that big truck in front of me. But that is always one of my favorite things to do is to come over that hill and then you see, you see the city skyline of Cincinnati. At night, it's a super cool thing to drive in like that, but uh, not as spectacular today. But I am stopping on the Covington side to take a photograph of this uh, rather famous bridge down here. Looks a lot like the uh, Brooklyn Bridge. Same architect, I believe, built the Brooklyn Bridge, built this one. Uh, so I'm down here at the river. I'm gonna take a few photographs of that. Seems like something's going on. There's police all over the place. So hopefully that's uh, no big deal, but I got a two hour parking spot. I'm gonna go take a few photos. I might take a uh, video. I might try to take a video, we'll see. All right guys, like I said, lots of uh, emergency vehicle activity down here, but I am in one of the coolest spots in Cincinnati, this old bridge, skyline in the back. Yeah, super cool to come down here. Took a few, uh, took a few videos as well as some photographs of it. Yeah, you can see the cops all over the place. And I don't know if you can tell this, but they're across the river as well way down the street so they're all over i have no idea they're not in a hurry to rescue anybody or do anything so i'm not exactly sure what's going on but beautiful day here in cincinnati and got a few shots hopefully maybe a few stock images um right there the is the guy uh i'll say i'll, I'll butcher the way to say his name rumbling rambling i don't know that's the guy that designed the bridge, did the Brooklyn Bridge too. You can definitely tell uh, the similarity, obviously. Okay, so interestingly enough, I guess there was a suicide attempt off one of these bridges. That's with all the emergency vehicles. And there's actually three weddings going on. There's one going on there. And then there's two up in these uh, houses and event area over there. So must be the weekend for weddings in Ohio. I said I was going to go to the hotel and I just haven't done it. So, yeah, very beautiful. Leaves are falling, changing. Yeah, just gorgeous afternoon. I made it. Have I told you guys I hate the masks? Hate the masks. But I made it. I'm in Fairborn, Ohio, which is just outside of Dayton, which is just outside of the town where we're going to do the wedding tomorrow. It is a beautiful day here in Ohio, but it's been a long day of driving, which was super smooth, but you know, it always wears you out a little bit to do that much driving. So I'm going to go get some dinner and then I'm going to come and just relax. Now, when it comes to visiting Ohio, there is a restaurant that I always have to visit because it's just uniquely Ohio. Now, I have found that people either love this place or hate this place. There's usually not a gray area in this regard. So I happen to be one of the people that love it. I wish my family was here to enjoy it with me, but I'm going to do it anyway because I love it enough. And it's just, you can't get in anywhere else but Ohio or, you know, neighboring Ohio. You can't get in South Carolina. So I'm going... Uh, even if I have to go by myself. And that is Skyline Chili. Hey, it's a beautiful morning in Ohio. Wedding this afternoon and I have been up. Got my lousy cup of hotel coffee, bagel, now I am uh, formatting cards, which by the way, just a little side note, I always format my cards three times. 
erase all the images, then format it three times. I don't know, this is just the routine that I've always done and I have never, I don't think I've ever had a card go bad on me. So if it's not broke, don't fix it. I'm gonna continue to do that. That's just my routine, charging all the batteries and getting ready. I gotta run down to the store because I need some more AA batteries for my flashes just in case. Always nice to have a few extras of those. Maybe pick up a couple other things and uh, lay around for another hour or so before I have to head out to this wedding. But it is a gorgeous day and looking forward to some success with some wedding photography. Should be fun. One thing I want to talk about as I go to this wedding, as you know, um, I'm a big fan of this X100 that I got, and I think that when I got this, I really thought this would be an amazing event camera. So I'm taking it to the wedding. I'm excited to see how it does. I've never shot it at a wedding, so in some ways I'm, I don't know, not nervous about it necessarily, but I, you know, obviously I have my big camera and I'm gonna, you know, do most of the work with that, but I'm gonna use this could I shoot an entire wedding with this? Yeah, I think I really could. Not sure I wanna just do that and rely on it, but one of the things that I'm doing with it is I've put the autofocus on face detect. Obviously everything I shoot for the most part is gonna be faces. So we'll see how that works and I'm excited to see how that goes. The other thing I'm interested to see is the reaction from people on this camera based on its size. You know, perception is a big deal and when you walk in with a big, huge camera, Everybody thinks you know what you're doing. You walk in with a little camera and they might be like, I thought this guy was a professional. So we'll see how that goes. Yeah, I'm excited to put it through the paces in a, in a fast paced wedding. I've also put it on JPEG, which I haven't shot JPEGs with this camera yet. I'm a big believer in shooting raw, but volume is an issue. So you shoot these big raw files and you've got a ton of uh, storage that's needed. I think JPEG are gonna cut it just fine. Of course, I'm doing the highest quality JPEG. A little bit of learning curve, but I'm excited. I'm gonna go get some lunch before I go to this wedding. Well, good morning, guys. I um, apologize that I did not get uh, any video of the wedding last night, but once I got there and got going, um, I really meant to take some video of some things going on, but you know, I got into photographing it and dealing with all the things that were going on and I just didn't make time to do any video because I was there for a job and that job was not video, so there it is. Got my lousy cup of uh, hotel coffee. Wedding last night was wonderful, it went really well. It was cold though and we were outside the entire time and there was a bit of a breeze, so my face feels like I'm a little windburnt, but just a little quick review, X100V for wedding photography. Um, it was fabulous in some ways. I love the fact that it was as portable as it was and I could in and out and in and out and click, 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 and it did the thinking for me as far as a lot of exposures. Two major things that I think you'd have to address as a wedding photographer with this camera. 23 millimeter lens is not super wide, it's kind of that mid-range wide angle lens and I found myself wishing I had a wider angle lens. My main camera that I shoot with, I have a 17 millimeter on a full frame sensor. So I use that 17 quite often at a wedding. You know, you get in a tight little spot where the girls are getting ready or, you know, any number of things. So I was a little frustrated with the, the, the angle of view. I think I could get used to it and you would just know you can't do those super wide shots. So I don't think that's a, a deal breaker necessarily as a wedding camera, uh, but certainly something to think about. And then the other thing that bothered me is the battery died towards the end of the ceremony. So I didn't I didn't do any reception stuff with it. Um, and that, the battery didn't actually die, just the red lights came on that it was about to be done. And I've only got the one battery at this point. So you would have to have multiple batteries for sure. Would I do weddings with this camera? Yes. I definitely would if I started shooting a lot of weddings again. This would be part of that arsenal, I think. But you would have to combine it with something else to uh, kind of fill some of those wide angle images. And and you don't have the telephoto either if you wanna zoom in and get things. Um, but I didn't have a problem with that. Usually you can just get in closer. You can just zoom with your feet, so to speak. So that's my take on it as a wedding camera. I would love to be a second shooter sometime where I'm not as reliant on getting every single shot. I'm just support to a main photographer. And in that case, I would definitely just do this one. I would have no problem with that. 
but I would have multiple batteries. Exciting news today, I am uh, packing up, getting out of here. I'm heading home today, but before I head home, I'm gonna go see an old friend who, I was thinking this morning, I was gonna describe him as a mentor. I don't know that mentor is the perfect word. Certainly this guy was uh, inspirational at the beginning of my photo career. I'm off to see a guy named Clay White, and Clay was an instructor when I went to school. Uh, he taught commercial photography, a lot of commercial classes. And then he was still an instructor when I went back there to be an instructor myself. And at that time he was teaching more of the general ed classes and some of, I don't know what all he was teaching. He wasn't teaching photography as much, uh, but he was still a very inspirational part of what I was doing there. I keep in touch with him via email. We talk sports all the time, uh, but I'm gonna go see Clay, catch up with him for a little while. Hopefully he'll let me take his picture. Be neat to have a picture of Clay. And, uh, and then we're gonna head out of here. But as you can see, it's kind of a overcast, gray, cloudy Ohio day. This is kind of typical sometimes. Uh, the weather's been beautiful up until now, and now it's just kind of dreary. All right, so I just left meeting with Clay. Um, super good to see him. And uh, it started raining, but uh, I got a photo of Clay. I apologize that I did not uh, videotape that, but here's the photo of Clay. And Clay, um, I'm gonna take back what I said before, that mentor probably is a good uh, a good description for Clay because Clay was one of those people that was a, is what I would consider to be glory and excellence in all he did. His photography was amazing. Uh, did a lot of black and white work, pinhole cameras. I remember as a student, he would spend uh, Friday nights um, in the, in the, after the school would close, he would go in there and make prints in the dark room and he just very systematic in how he did it, and he did it right, and and it just instilled a, 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 a sense of excellence in my photography. So mentor probably is a, is a decent word, and uh, it was great to catch up with him. And uh, so, yeah, that was, that was fantastic. Time well spent. Um, so now I gotta hit the road, get back home, get out of this uh, rainy weather. Hopefully we get south of it and uh, have some clear weather. It is a good thing that it is raining here because I could spend a bunch of time here. Um, look at these trees. That's the Carillon Tower in one of my favorite places in Dayton is Carillon Park. And they just keep changing this place, but it is so picturesque and photogenic. Um, I shot a lot of this thing when I was in college, came to this park all the time to do photo shoots. But look at the trees. Just amazing. Nailed the color perfectly as far as the timing this year. Um, and if it wasn't raining and it was a beautiful day, I would probably have a hard time leaving. And I need to get home. And I've got like seven, eight hours of driving. So I guess it's a good thing that it's raining so that I'll get myself out of here, but God, photographer's paradise today, if it wasn't for the weather. So let's go home. One more stop, actually one more Ohio stop and then I'm out of here. Okay, my last stop before I take off and head down the road is Tim Hortons, which is not uniquely Ohio, but it is Ohio to us because we used to come here all the time and they don't have these in South Carolina. My son wants some uh, Timbits, and I need a cup of coffee. Last stop. guys it is Monday it's the next day I made it home yesterday everything went very well uh, long weekend though a lot of driving and successful wedding for sure and I am on my way to work now kind of a busy week at work this week so i um, gonna hit it pretty hard um, as soon as I get in there and um, be editing a wedding and 
and probably do a video talking about the X100 for weddings because I got some more thoughts about it the more I'm looking at the images and kind of how all that went. So um, if you watch this far, I thank you. I know this was probably one of my choppier videos. I'm kind of all over the place and I don't vlog super great, but uh, I appreciate everybody watching and leaving comments. If you got a comment, I would have greatly appreciate that. Always love to hear from you guys. And for everybody that subscribes, thank you so much. You guys have a good work week. Take care. Bye.